Welcome to Rogers TV's COVID-19 local update. Over the next half hour, we will be talking to you about the situation in the area and tips on what to do during this time. I'm Anandi Carol Willery. With the first case of COVID-19 declared in Brant County, Brantford Brant MPP Will Bauma gives us a local update on the situation in the area. As you know, we've had uh, our, uh, I think our first case in the uh, county of Brant from someone who recently returned from Mexico. And uh, of course, that's quite a concern to everyone. Uh, at the same time, I think uh, we live in an incredible community. People are really stepping up to the plate, uh, watching for their friends and neighbors and uh, staying home when necessary and uh, talking to uh, the restaurant owners on Main Street in St. George yesterday that, uh, you know, everyone's doing what they, they, they can in order to contain this so that we can, you know, flatten this curve of infection that we're, that we're worried about to make sure that our community comes through this. And yet, one of the incredible things and probably what makes me most proud about representing the riding of Brantford and Brant is how everyone is stepping up to the plate, taking this seriously and uh, making sure that everyone can do what they can to get uh, our community through this together. We just heard from the Premier not too, too long ago that uh, we're working very, very closely right now with the Prime Minister, with the uh, Federal Minister of Finance, uh, Bill Morneau, and uh, the uh, Federal Minister of Health, and that we're working very, very closely together in, uh, in order to be able to develop a package that will uh, make sure that uh, we can do what we can to make sure that people in Ontario are kept whole. Uh, tomorrow we'll be introducing legislation, I think, to protect workers so that, uh, and I think that's retroactive to January 25th, if I'm not mistaken, that uh, if you've needed to take time off uh, to take care of children, to, to, uh, to uh, be in isolation, to keep yourself from, being, from affecting anyone else, that, uh, you know, when our, because obviously family comes first and, and, and we need to keep people safe and healthy. And so we're introducing legislation to the House tomorrow that will be able to do that. And yet, keeping social distancing in place. Um, there's only going to be a few members in the House. We've worked with the opposition and the independent members in order to craft this legislation so that we're expecting this to pass with unanimous consent very quickly tomorrow so that we can get these protections in place. Obviously, we've uh, released $304 million in funding to, so that we have the health care resources in place in order to take care of people as necessary. And then I believe the uh, federal government uh, released uh, I don't know if it's 27 billion, but it's uh, quite a significant number to make sure that uh, uh, people and businesses affected by this can remain whole so that we can weather this storm. You know, yesterday I posted that uh, I want everyone else to, uh, in the community, myself included, to, to uh, go out and support those businesses uh, to the best of our ability as we can through this. You know, there's uh, many people, many small businesses that will be suffering as a result of this just through a lack of traffic, people staying home. And so if you have a chance, uh, last night we picked up uh, uh, wings from Wild Wing and Brantford and, and uh, I'm trying to make a habit of that to support those businesses that have to get through this because obviously through that we can support everyone else. Um, I, uh, I know that our community has faced a lot of different crises in the past but because of the strength of character that I see in the people at Brantford and Brant, I know that we will get through this one too. Here are the closures in the Brantford area as of March 18th. All city owned community centers and facilities. All public information centers. All city hosted neighborhood or ward meetings and town halls. The Brantford Waterwise Gardening Seminars all special events, the Brantford Farmer's Market, the interiors of all restaurants with the exception of drive through or takeout, all seniors programming, the Sanderson Centre, the Brantford Tourism Centre, the Brantford Brant 2020 Point in Time Count, Wilfrid Laurier University and Conestoga College Brantford campuses. Stay tuned to Rogers TV for local COVID-19 updates. Next, we will be discussing the Community Response Fund and the COVID Update Hotline. Here's Joan Fisk, CEO of the United Way of Waterloo Region. Hi, my name 
name is Joan Fisk. I'm CEO of the United Way Waterloo Region Communities. The COVID-19 Community Response Fund has been created to support frontline organizations who support the most vulnerable in our region. Uh, we're here to support everyday citizens, not just the ones that are that we only support through our agencies, but who are affected by the outbreak. Um, the organizations that are doing critical work on the front line are having their resources stretched significantly. And so we're asking the community to support us directly so that we can develop uh, a response to people that maybe are out of a job and all the other impacts, food, food insecurity, Meals on Wheels for increased delivery for isolation that's happening right now, and many other issues that we have yet to uncover because this unfolds day to day. Please, please go online on our, um, our youthe1.ca. This is a really great, or our re regular Waterloo Wellington, or Waterloo uh, United Way, Waterloo Region Communities uh, email. We are really uh, appealing and, and will continue to appeal to the community to help us with this fund. Luckily today we got about $1,900 so far, so we're really excited that the event is starting to make a difference. But remember, we've got refugee families that we still need to support. We've got uh, frontline workers who are being impacted. We've got loved ones to keep safe. And and school is also a big issue with all these kids out of school, both uh, public school kids whose parents are staying home now and high school kids. Malls are being closed. I mean, all of a sudden, the normal way we communicate is, is uh, significantly changed. Uh, two one one is up and running. There may be a slight delay because there seems to be a fairly high call volume, but that's a great resource because it is in many, many languages. It responds and will direct the call to places where it, it may best be directed, whether it's mental health issues, food, uh, language skills, all kinds of other things. So 211 is a great one to call. You can also connect directly to uh, our office through the online resource and we will try and connect people with where they can get support. And we will really appeal to our community to help support our our local hood. I mean, as you know, anything United Way raises stays here, but this particular response is even more uh, of a crisis because during this financial hit that we'll take, we will expect to see our normal donation um, volume go down and it will be a, a direct impact on who needs the support. Well, um, residents on 211 can get all kinds of support. They can get things like community uh, support. They can connect to community, like our local communities through our region or your city where you live. It will also connect you with healthcare resources as particularly in this uh, emergency of COVID testing, they'll tell you the best place to go. We don't want to jam up emergency rooms and health places. Public health is also connected to 211 and they can connect you to a number of other services directed to the anxiety this creates and the physical isolation that help, happens when you don't can't go to work, don't have a place to go to work and uh, that you're working alone at home. 211 will give you uh, regional updates as well. So if you are looking for some uh, information on Government of Canada services, on Ontario services, or even the region, 211 will help you connect there as well. Here are the closures in the Guelph area as of March 18th. All council meetings. The Guelph General Hospital is restricting visitors. All libraries, recreation centers, pools, and arenas. The University of Guelph, including student residents. All special events. Guelph Tourism Information Centers. Interiors of all restaurants, with the exception of drive through or takeout. All seniors centers. The Sleeman Center. The River Run Center. Trade and Entertainment in Wellington County. Grand River Raceway and Casino in Alora, North End Harvest Market, The Bookshelf Cinema, Guelph Farmers Market, and Conestoga College Guelph Campus. We spoke with the City of Stratford about how they are dealing with this pandemic and how they are supporting their citizens.
The city of Stratford has closed the Stratford Rotary Complex, including the arenas, the walking track, meeting rooms. We've asked and, of course, postponed all Stratford Lakeside Active Adults programming. We've shut down the Burnside Agriplex. Duff Marina and Alma Marina is closed. The Stratford Public Library is closed. And as of tomorrow, our March break programs, as well as the Anne Hathaway Daycare, will close. We've postponed a number of things as well, such as subcommittee meetings at the city, advisory committee meetings. We have looked at all public consultation sessions being put aside. We've canceled the Swan Parade, which for some people is a mark of spring within our community. We've canceled the International Dairy Expo. Invest Stratford has canceled their International Women's Day event. And the Stratford Sports Wall of Fame and Stratford Minor Sports Person of the Year Banquet has, of course, been canceled as well. We're continuing to monitor other services we provide, and we'll be announcing in the next couple of days limiting or completely eliminating uh, any public access to city buildings while we provide service either through the internet or on the phone to individuals looking for those services. We are gonna continue looking at, of course, under the direction of public health here on Perth, uh, what kind of services we can offer and whether or not we should be limiting some of our transit use, uh, what enhanced cleaning measures we should continue to be upgrading and putting in place. Uh, Festival Hydro and Rhizo Networks, two subsidiaries of the city, of course, owned by us, have closed their offices to the public. And we are really evaluating uh, twice a day with all new information coming out and advice being given to us, different measures we're gonna put in place. And it is a very fluid situation right now. We are working to look at how we can support individuals that are isolated within their own homes or the most vulnerable or seniors and shut-ins. We have reached out to the Council of Churches in Stratford to get a list of volunteers they may possibly have within their congregations, uh, looking at coordinating uh, some of those to help provide whatever services are needed for the shut-ins and most vulnerable. And we're also asking them to help identify vulnerable people within our community, and we will be doing more with that over the next day uh, of course, giving people an opportunity to register for those types of services. What we want to do is understand what services we're going to offer before we reach out to the public and ask for help. We feel that's the best long-term solution of ensuring public safety and making sure we don't risk anyone else becoming uh, infected with this virus. Uh, we are looking at all services that are essential to the operation of the city, whether it be water, uh, wastewater and sewer, uh, hydro services being able to have continual operation, supporting the cleaning of public facilities, our those in public and social housing, and those on Ontario Works, and of course any homelessness initiatives that we have, we want to make sure they continue so that people have a safe place to stay and live. These are the type of challenges that are of course providing us uh, what I would call the issues that we need to look at. Some of the city services we offer are not going to be in high demand over the coming weeks, so we're trying to find ways to ensure the services people are really going to need are going to be available to them. On a business continuity plan, we started looking at whether or not we should give residents the opportunity to defer off on taxes that are due on April 6th. We'll be making a decision around that in the coming days. We have to look at not only the cash flow to the city, but how we could do that and give people more time to pay if they, uh, if they need it. Uh, I have been in contact with many mayors across the region, different ministers at the provincial level, different federal and provincial organizations and departments. Uh, it is really an opportunity for us to try to gain as much information as possible so that we're making decisions, we're making informed decisions. And as I said earlier, it's very fluid. We are getting briefings a couple of times a day from different levels of uh, government, uh, whether it's from the provincial emergency operations command or the emergency uh, communications coming from Public Health Agency of Canada, and all of those are requiring us to reevaluate continually. And we believe that we are really uh, trying to be as flexible and as fluid to a situation as we can while providing the best service possible. And communication has been the key. Uh, our communication staff are trying not only on social media, such as Facebook and Twitter, but ensuring traditional means of communication uh, much like Rogers or radio or print journalism is still an opportunity for maybe some of our seniors who aren't on social media to gain as much information as possible. 
people should go for more information on healthcare to the Here in Perth Public Health Unit's website, and it's hpph.ca. You can also find it at stratford.ca. We have a coronavirus uh, heading. You can click on it, and it will tell you everything that's open or closed, uh, any changes or press releases we put out, and you can also sign up for continual notification on those. We'll push the notifications out to you each and every day. So I think we're trying as best we can to work with it. Uh, other provisions of services are emer emergency management services or emergency uh, ambulance services. We're working with fire to coordinate with Perth County EMS so that we're sure that people are getting to the emergent calls, such as heart attacks, where they need uh, response of not only ambulance but also fire. And in cases where it's not necessary, fire is staying back so that we do not expose our frontline firefighters to any type of virus situation that could be occurring. So they're pre-screening many of the calls. And the Stratford Police Service are working to ensure they're providing the utmost continuity of service across our area. I would just say to people uh, right now, self-quarantine, self-isolation, social distancing, uh, not going out if you don't have to, uh, is probably the best way to stop the spread of this washing your hands continually, cleaning surfaces within your home, and of course, thinking of those less fortunate. And if there's an opportunity, you can help a neighbor or friend or somebody from work or in the community get items they don't have, uh, that's important. We'd ask people to stop hoarding. Uh, there is no need to hoard. Uh, there will be an opportunity for people to continually purchase product. We just ask you to do that so a set of fear and panic doesn't set in within communities across the area. And also think of those less fortunate and try to be the neighbor that uh, you hope they would be for you. Here are the closures in the Stratford area as of March 18th. Mayor Matheson's State of the City Address, the Swan Parade, all libraries, the Rotary Complex, all special events, all city-owned community centres and arenas, interiors of all restaurants excluding drive through and takeout all subcommittee meetings and advisory meetings, the Stratford Sports Hall of Fame Banquet, the Perth East Municipal Office, the Volunteer Action Centre, University of Waterloo and Conestoga College Stratford campuses. As of the morning of March 18th, the region of Waterloo had 10 confirmed cases of coronavirus. Here is the regional update from that morning. First, regarding St. Mary's High School. As you are already aware, a member of St. Mary's High School community in Kitchener tested positive for COVID-19. As a precaution, a letter was sent home to anybody who may, have con who may have come into contact with the individual on March the 9th. We worked closely with the school and the school board to identify anybody who could have been potentially exposed. We believe this is a low-risk situation and we have not had any further confirmed COVID-19 cases in the St. Mary's School community to date. Public health is hearing from the St. Mary's School community and we continue to ask those who receive the letter to self-monitor for symptoms. I'll also provide a few case updates now. Case 9, which we announced yesterday, a male in his 20s who acquired COVID-19 during travel to the United States tested at Grand River Hospital and is self-isolating at home. Today we have a 10th case, a female in her 40s who acquired her illness during travel to Pakistan who was tested at Grand River Hospital and is also self-isolating at home. One of our cases remains hospitalized but is recovering and the other of our two cases who was hospitalized has been released from hospital. Based on the recommendations from Dr. Wong, we have made a decision to close regional administrative facilities to the public until April the 6th. This is in addition to the closure of our library branches, museum, and child care centers. 
These decisions have a significant impact on those we serve, and we do not make them lightly. However, we feel that they are in the best interest of our community as a whole. Ashley, you've got the, uh, uh, you got the floor. Okay, so uh, how close are we to setting up assessment centers for COVID-19? Hi, uh, so this is Shuli. So uh, we do have uh, uh, assessment centers that are associated with the hospitals that are up and running at uh, St. Mary's and uh, Grand River and uh, will be soon at uh, Cambridge Memorial Hospital. We are also continuing to work with our hospital and primary care partners uh, to open up uh, uh, community located uh, assessment centers. Uh, these will not be centers uh, to do testing of mild community cases, uh, but they will be uh, areas that people who want to be assessed, uh, you know, by a physician, uh, can 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 go uh, to be assessed. Well, just made all their fares free until mid-April to keep people from having to buy monthly bus passes, and they're asking people to board the bus from the back. Is that something the region is at all considering? Yeah. So we're we're monitoring what other transit properties are doing. Um, it's something that we're considering. The, the, the for, um, free fares or you know, purchasing fare cards, all of that right now can be done electronically. So, um, you know, so we're, not, we're not making a change to that. Um, and we feel that by um, on the buses, moving the, um, you know, moving the yellow line back has created enough space between passengers and our operators for now. And so between that, between re that reduced ridership, um, we believe that for now, we've kind of created enough social distance on transit and to keep our operators safe and to keep our passengers safe. But, you know, as with everything in this, um, in this response, we're monitoring it actively. And if, you know, we get to a point in the next days or weeks where we feel like we need to take more measures to keep our operators safe and keep passengers safe and healthy, then we'll do that. Here are the closures in the Wadler region as of March 18th. Regional operated daycares. Region of Waterloo museums including day camps. All libraries. The Sunnyside long-term care home. All special events. The St. Jacobs Market District including the Farmers Market. Interiors of all restaurants, excluding drive through and takeout. The Apollo Cinema. The Princess Cinemas. Community Support Connections. The Volunteer Action Center. All Good Life and Fit for Less Gyms. All University of Waterloo, Wilfrid Laurier University, and Conestoga College campuses. All Council Meetings. During this time, COVID-19 can cause a number of mental health issues, including anxiety and depression. We spoke with Jordan Iorio at Brant Mental Health Solutions about how to cope with the situation and how to move forward. First thing uh, definitely is limiting your media exposure. Um, that That's absolutely like paramount so if you can limit yourself to one covid talk a day with people um if it's more than one uh you can politely express to people that it's bothering you and that you've already talked about it today and you can remove yourself and if those people have a problem with that then it, it's more about taking care of yourself in that instance we're all stuck with us together and we should stick together and be a community but you should limit yourself to that and I say stay away from the TV news and stick more to print. Um, the TV is a lot coming at you at once. You have things scrolling and somebody talking and they have intense music going and it really gets your central nervous system going and it's hard to calm down from that. So if you stick to, I say right now, stick to your local government news, the federal government news and what the World Health Organization is saying. That's all you need to know. There's nothing else you need to know um, CNN is going to run the same things all day. If there's breaking news, you're going to hear it from your federal government if it's important enough. Um, it's the constant pounding of it all day that's, that's really raising people's anxiety levels. And uh, the other thing is uh, when that happens, you don't really think as clearly as you normally would. And that's when you go into everybody's calling panic mode, right? So, you know, going and buying 
20 rolls of toilet paper. And if you can't find it, then what, then what, then what, you know, listen, there's a lot of conspiracy theorists out there. Listen to your government. Um, I believe if, if there really was a conspiracy, we would know by now, it would be shown by now. <laughs> we have a good government. Um, uh, everything I believe is going to be fine. The statistics still say the same thing as four weeks ago. If you have a compromised immune system, if you're over 70, 80, you know, stay away from those people. Let's help them out. The community's coming together. Look for look for things that are bringing the community together, right? I noticed Sayers is people over 70 can go shop at 7 to 8 in the morning and then they disinfect the whole store. So, like, the community's coming together. You focus on the community coming together. So, you get a lot of people that... And in a sense, it's true, but in a sense, it's not. So a lot of people are saying, you know, people aren't taking this seriously. And if somebody's anxious about it and doesn't want to talk about it, then you're not taking it seriously. That's what they think. So then it just creates like, uh, like attention. So then the temp or uh, moods may go into like everybody gets angry and like, how can you not care about this? And you know, you have to. I ask people, please recognize if somebody is feeling nervous and they even express that. Or you can see, I mean, you don't have to do what I do as a counselor to be able to tell when somebody's nervous. It's, it can be obvious, but I just ask people, please, to be mindful of that. So if you notice somebody's nervous, it's not that they don't care. It's that sometimes those people I've noticed are working in healthcare. They've heard, they've heard it all day, and they need a break at the end of the day so they can go back tomorrow and probably are working extra hours to help people. Um, and then, yeah, you've got people that already have anxiety disorders or illnesses. And they're fully aware. They don't need to hear it anymore. They're fully aware of what's going on. So I just ask people to please be mindful. And if they ask or remove themselves, ask you to please stop talking about it or remove themselves. They're not being a jerk. Um, they're not being rude. They just, they need their own time. And that's when I ask when you immediately remove yourself is to go do what your mindful activity is. So like I said, video games are great. Could be board games, could be puzzles, could be reading, like, uh, very interesting novel like it doesn't matter what it is um, call it video call your best friend right away have that set up as a, a mechanism for you Rogers TV will have COVID-19 updates as they come out stay tuned to channel 20 to stay informed about the situation in your area thanks for watching <laughs>